If your website has a chat widget, you probably want to track it with tools like Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4. In this case, there are some nuances and limitations, but there's still a chance that this is possible. In this video, I will show you how to track chat widgets on your website with GTM and GA4. Here I have a demo page where I'm using a chat widget. So the main problem with chat widgets is that if you try to use some built-in triggers in Google Tag Manager like click triggers, they will not work because chats are usually using iframes. For example, here, if I do the right click, you will see a reload frame or view frame source. It means that this is happening in an iframe, which is like mini website within this website. Therefore, if you try to use the all elements click trigger in Google Tag Manager, Google Tag Manager will not be able to spot clicks happening on this widget or on this element right here. So usually when you're working with chats and you want to track them with Google Tag Manager, your best bet is to Google and try to find some listener which is coded to listen to the interactions of the chat and then make them available in the data layer. In this case, I'm using Smart Sub chat widget. Therefore, you could go to Google search, then enter your chat widgets provider name and then write something like Google Tag Manager listener or track with Google Tag Manager or, you know, something like that. So I will type Google Tag Manager listener. And then if you're lucky, you will find a listener. For example, here we have a listener available on dumb data. So let's try and see if it works. Here I will click on this page. Then here is the listener code. So we can just copy it, then go to Google Tag Manager and go to tags, then new tag configuration, then custom HTML, paste that code. And in fact, I think it's a good practice just to read the instructions if there are any available right here, because they might give you some additional tips on what to do or what not to do. But in this case, I will fire this listener on all pages, and then let's name this. So CHTML stands for custom HTML, and let's name this smart sub listener, and then hit save. So this container is already installed on this particular website, so I will just enable the preview mode. Let's click the preview button. Then on this page, we will need to enter the URL of the page where we have the chat widget and click connect. So now the preview mode is connected and let's start a chat. So I will type something like this, then send the message and let's see if we have anything in the data layer. And indeed we have, here is the smart sub chat event. If I click it, I see the message sent event name or actually chat box action. And then we have some additional information right here. Most of it, I'm not sure if it's useful, maybe it will be useful for you, but for us, basically it's enough just to have the message sent information. Now let's see what happens if I send another message. Another message is also sent like this, and now we have several other messages. So one is message sent, one is message received, then sent and received. So it means that basically with every message, two events happen, sent and received. Let's say that in this case, I care only about the message sent, therefore I will need to create my setup more accurately and I will need to ignore the message received part right here. Now let's go to Google Tag Manager, triggers, and first I will create a trigger because I want to fire a Google Analytics event when this event happens and chat action is message sent. So in triggers, I will click new, trigger configuration, then custom event, and here I will need to enter the event name, which is this one. So I will paste it and then I will name this like that. But as we have noticed, we get two events with each message. We want to use only message sent. With other chat widgets, the process might look a bit different. Maybe they will send an event only when the chat starts and we don't get a separate event for each message or we don't get two events. So you will need to adapt. But in this case, we get two events and we want to fire only on one. Therefore, we need to use this parameter and we will need to use it in our trigger. So if this event happens and chat action exactly matches so this, then our trigger should work. But to use this, we need to create a data layer variable. So I will copy the name of the parameter 
and then some custom events. And here I will need to create a new variable of which type is data layer variable. So this is the variable settings. And then I will name this DLV, which is data layer variable and like that, then click save. So the variable is created. And now we have to enter the condition in the trigger. So we want to activate this trigger only when chat action exactly matches or equals message sent without quotation marks. So copy this and paste it like that. Maybe we can even rename the trigger a bit to message sent and hit save. In this Google Tag Manager container, I have already installed Google Analytics 4. This is the basic setup where it's just Google Tag and that Google Tag has this particular measurement ID. If you haven't installed Google Analytics in your container yet, then I will post a link to a tutorial below the video. Watch that first. That tutorial is about the installation process. And then when you do that, come back to this tutorial. So now when this event happens, we want to send an event to Google Analytics. So let's go to tags, new tag configuration, Google Analytics, GA4 event, then paste the measurement ID, which is the same as it was in the Google tag. And then here we can name this something like chat or chat message. Maybe chat is enough. I mean, it depends on what kind of interactions do you want to track because with some chat providers, you can get more events like chat opened, chat closed, chat started, message sent and all that stuff. So in those cases, you might want to have different event names. But in this case, we just care about the message. And that's the only thing that is tracked. So we will just name this chat. And then we don't need any additional event parameters. Technically, you could track them, but they are way too unique unless of course, well, accept the chat subtype. So maybe you could send that if you want. But right now, I would say that just the fact that the message was sent is enough for us. And now in the triggering, click anywhere and add that custom event trigger. Let's name this tag GA4 event chat. And technically, we could click save. But let's say that each chat will have like 20 messages or maybe even more, which means that we will have way too many events. So we could limit this at least to some extent by firing this tag only once per page. So if the chat is happening on a single page, if there are like hundreds of messages, we would still track just one chat event. Because in this case, usually when you track chats with Google Analytics, you only care that some chat interaction happened. You don't care about if there were 50 messages or 200 messages or something like that. Therefore, you could go to advanced settings then tag firing options and once per page. Of course, if the visitor reloads the page and then sends a message again, this tag will still fire once more. Or if the visitor goes to the next page and triggers this event, it will still be fired. But at least we will avoid a bunch of duplicates on the same page. If you want to prevent all subsequent events of the same conversation, technically you could try to use cookies and build a more advanced solution, but this goes out of scope of this tutorial. So now let's hit save and let's test if this is working. So I will click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And now if I go to the website, I will send a message. Well, they're asking me for some information. So, okay, whatever. And then we have the smart chat event. And on that event, our tag fired. And now on the subsequent events, they did not fire because first of all, chat action is different. Now let's send one more message. And on this message sent, the tag did not fire because it has already fired on the page. And now if I go to Google Analytics, then admin, then debug view, here I will see the chat event and there will be several automatically tracked parameters, for example, page location, page refer, page title. So we know where that chat happened. And that's the general idea of how can you track chat widgets. Try to find an existing listener. And if it is, then install it with Google Tag Manager and see if it works. But what if there is no listener available online? Well, in that case, there is one more option that might potentially work, but it would require some JavaScript knowledge. So let's imagine that there is no smart sub chat event listener. In that case, what you should do is that you can try to look if the chat widget has a JavaScript API. In Google search, you could enter the 
name of the chat widget and then type JavaScript API and then enter. Now here, I want to emphasize that we are looking just for the JavaScript API, not REST API or any other API, but JavaScript API, because this potentially can help us find certain methods. How can we listen to chat interactions? So here, this looks promising. We have chat box, JavaScript API. This sounds like exactly what we need. So we can click here and here we will see methods. How can we implement custom behaviors of the chat. For example, if we want to show the chat, this is the code. If we want to hide the chat, this is the command that should be used. But we don't want to manipulate the behavior of the chat. We just want to listen to events coming from the chat. So here we see events. And let's see what we have here. We can listen to message sent. And then we can also check message received. And if the messenger is closed, which I assume is this widget right here, then we could get another event. So basically, we could use this code to write some listener ourselves. So as you can see, some JavaScript knowledge will be needed here. Let's try to write a basic listener that will be looking for message sent events and will push some information to the data layer. For this to work first, I will remove the listener from Google Tag Manager. That's because we are imagining that there is no listener. And now if I click preview, this will refresh the page. And on this page, the listener is no longer available. So now I can open developer tools and that can be done by clicking three dots, then more tools, developer tools. And here in the console, I can clear everything. And let's just copy this code example. If you're working with the JavaScript console, do not copy the script tags, just copy the code, which is inside of it. Let's copy and paste it right here. So basically, the idea of this code is that when message is sent, the message will be logged into the console. The console is what you see right here. So now I hit enter, and I will try to send a message. And here is the message that was logged. We can expand it and we can see what kind of information is available. We have the chat ID, we even have the content of the message. But personally, I think that's not a good idea to push this to the data layer because for every message, the content will be different. And I see no reason or no use case to have this in Google Analytics. Then we have created at then ID of the chat or maybe ID of the message or I don't know what it is, but maybe this will be useful for you. Then we have subtype, we have the type of the message, but again, does not sound very useful. We also have visitor ID. In this case, let's say that we will make the subtype available in the data layer. I'm not very familiar with this particular chat provider, but maybe there are other subtypes available. So maybe contact is useful in this case. So if you want to access the contact, you could do that by typing message dot subtype because this right here is the message. Basically, if this is extracted, this is what you get. So inside that message, we could access the subtype that could be done by typing message dot subtype. So let's try to modify the code and type message dot subtype case sensitive. Now we want to do this without the previous listener being active. So I will just refresh the page, then clear the console, paste the modified code. And now let's send a message. And here we have, this is the value of the subtype. So technically we could use this in our listener. Now the listener would look like this. Instead of console.log, we could type window.datalayer.push. And then with that data layer, we will send the event, which is called, let's say, chat, or maybe smart sub chat. And then we can also type message subtype, and its value will be message dot subtype. So this will be dynamically taken from the event which was fetched by the listener or actually which will be fetched by the listener. So we no longer need this console.log. And this is in general, the code of the very basic listener, which will be looking just at the message sent events. So now I can copy it. And then in Google Tag Manager, I go to tags, new 
tag configuration, custom HTML, then here the script tags are needed, and then we paste this code. Technically, you could also include this because maybe you have noticed that a bunch of other listeners are also using this first row. But since this listener is being used in Google Tag Manager, this is kind of already done automatically by the Google Tag Manager itself. So this is not needed. But if this kind of listener is implemented by the developer directly in the source code of the website, then definitely this row is needed. But if you add it inside Google Tag Manager, it will not do any harm. So now I will fire this, let's say, on all pages. Let's name this. And then let's save this. So let's see if this will work. Right now I will be looking only if the chat events appear in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. The tag will not fire because it is using a different custom event name right here. So this trigger will not work. But if the listener works, then we will fix the trigger a bit later. Now let's click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And then I will interact with the chat again. I no longer need the console, so I will close it. And here I will type something like hi again. And I see the event, it's available. And I also have the message subtype. So now on this event, I want to fire a GA4 event that will send its information to GA4. So in Google Tag Manager, I will just fix this trigger. But if you're doing this from scratch, of course, you will need to create a new trigger. So chat action is no longer relevant because my custom listener does not have this information. So I will just remove it. And then here I will insert a different name, which is smart sub chat like that. And then let's rename the trigger and click Save. If you want it, you could send that custom parameter, which is message subtype. Well, maybe it is useful for you. So let me show you how to do that in the event parameters section, expand it and then click add parameter, then type any parameter name that makes sense to you. For example, chat subtype, maybe that is useful. And then here we will need to create a new variable, which will access the message subtype copy. And then here, I will click plus to create a new variable. By the way, if you missed this step, I clicked this button. So click this button plus variable configuration and data layer variable. Here I will enter the name and here I will give this entire variable a name and click Save. So this looks okay. Basically, when this event happens, this tag will fire and together with the event, it will also send the chat subtype and it will fire once per page. Let's click Save. Now click Preview to refresh it and let's see if this works. So here I am on a website, I will send a message again, the listener caught that event, the tag fired. Now if I go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4, I should eventually see the chat event as well. And here it is. And together with that event, we also have the sub type. Now if you want to use this parameter in any Google Analytics 4 report, you would need to register it as a custom dimension. Below this video, I will post a link to a tutorial that explains how to work with custom dimensions. And speaking of the chat widget tracking, these are your main two options. You can either try to find a listener or you can try to write a listener if the chat provider has a JavaScript API. If you cannot find the listener and there is no JavaScript API, then I think you could just try to contact the providers or the vendors and then in this case, ask if they can suggest some solution because there is a small chance that they might have maybe undocumented JavaScript API or, you know, something else. And that's how you can track chat widgets with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.